Hello everyone, my name is Ashraf Chaz and welcome back to yet another One Piece card game video. So we're continuing on with our OPO2 transition guide for the English release. Uh, and this video is going to talk about staple cards in every color, what you should be looking out for, what you should pick up if you want to play a certain deck. And we're going to go through every single one of the, uh, I would say like staple cards that did see a lot of play and what you should be picking up when you are intending to play decks in OPO2. Now, if you want a full breakdown of like every single card, because I'm not going to do it in this video, I do have the every single uh, kind of review of every single card and every single color for OPO2. And you can kind of just watch it and see the initial thoughts I had when we were reviewing these cards. But in this video, we're going to strictly talk about staples. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribing if you want to keep up to date with more One Piece card game content. Without further ado, let's talk about every single staple card in every single color for OPO2. All right, so we're just going to refer to this website. I'm just going to briefly uh, talk about the cards. I'm not going to talk about the leaders. So starting with Atmos, Whitebeard decks do play Atmos. They do play a playset of this 4 cost 6,000 vanilla because once you pair it with Moby Dick, it's just going to be a big beater. So definitely, I would say staple in Whitebeard. And when you get 100% a staple, this is if you're playing red, either Zoro, either Luffy or Whitebeard, this is a necessary pickup. Get four of Edward Newgate. This is the strongest super rare in the set to me, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, this is, you have to get four, four times Edward Newgate for sure. And this is also another staple, Curly the Dan. This is your two cost 3000 power searcher where you can look up for uh, one char raid character of cost of one. This is a staple in Zora decks as well as red green law decks. So this is definitely one that you want to pick up. OPO3 has a uh, ace list that uses Curly Dead End as well. So it's definitely going to be a necessary pickup for OPO2. King Dew is a staple in Whitebeard decks, similar to Atmos. You just want big beaters on the board. Some Luffy lists do run King Dew as your five cost 7,000 vanilla card. The only reason why we're not running like a 6 cost 8,000 or 7 cost 9,000 is because 5 is efficient, 7k is all you need, and you can definitely pump him up with Dawn. So, King Dew, a uh, staple in those particular decks. Diamond Jozu, 4 times staple in Whitebeard, you have to get it. And it also can provide rush for that last final hit. So, in Whitebeard, a staple. Squad didn't really see a lot of play in the early days of the meta game, but later on, Squad actually uh, saw a lot of play um, just because of the ability to kind of minus 4,000 power to something, uh, maybe like a Sakazuki or something, and then you can pair it with Vista. Uh, so it's an efficient form of lowering someone's power and then removing it with uh, either Seaquake or a Vista. So in Whitebeard decks, this is a staple. Next is Vista. Vista is a definite four-time staple in um, Zoro decks, in Luffy decks, in Red Green Law decks, and especially in Whitebeard decks. So this this is just too good. This running with, alongside with Nico Robin, excellent. However, in OPO3, it's been kind of replaced with the new Marco the Phoenix. Uh, however, in OPO2, this is definitely a four times must get. All right, next up is Portgas the Ace. I think Ace is a little bit of a staple. However, some Luffy leader list does play Ace. This is also being played in Whitebeard decks for sure. Uh, it's going to definitely see play in Ace decks in the future, in Whitebeard decks in the future, in OPO3. So I would still say pick up a, a playset of Portgas the Ace if you plan to play more red decks in the future. So, staple. And if you can afford it, Manga Ace, staple. All right, next staple is Makino. This is 100% a red staple uh, in Zoro, in Law, in Luffy, and potentially Whitebeard as well. Um, but not really Whitebeard, more on the other red decks. Makino is just what makes the Zoro deck really strong. On play, give a one cost plus 3000 power. Your Nami's turn into attackers. Your Magras turn into attackers. Your Sunny Kun turn turns into like decent attackers and it's a 2k counter it is a four times staple you gotta pick this up magura is i have to kind of mention it because it did see some play if you're planning to play uh zora decks um i think that you could benefit from picking up a playset. set it, it did see some play in uh opio tree in the recent tournament in that zoro deck list so get this if you want to really play zoro i mean it's a common so it probably won't be that expensive so just pick it up if you have to. All right, next up is the blocker Marco the Phoenix. Get four times of this. Uh, this is an absolute staple. Uh, Whitebeard plays it. It's going to get better in OPO3. Get your play set, 100%. Rakuyo is interesting. I wouldn't call it a full-on staple because certain Whitebeard decks do play him. Some Whitebeard decks don't. 
there's different variations of it. So if you can pick up a playset of this guy, if not, you can skip out on it until you need to, to use it. Because white bit has different variants as well. And some versions run Rakuyo, some don't. So it's up to you. If you're playing white bit, just pick up a playset. You can use him if you want to. You don't necessarily have to. All right, Seaquake is a, I would say a staple as well, because you're dealing with the early aggression as white bit uh, against Zoro, uh, against Red Green Law. This is a great efficient form of removal. Just get your four times. It's going to be good in ace decks in the future. It's going to be good in white bit decks in the future as well. So. This is a staple. Uh, and lastly, the absolute must get four times off is Moby Dick. White Beard decks need Moby Dick. You need this card for sure. This is what makes the deck work. It's going to be good in OPO2 and it's going to be good in OPO3. So definitely get your playset. Okay, for, for green decks specifically, I know like certain cards, like for example, this Usopp is good in like the film stuff, but I'm going to talk about like the true, true staples, okay? So for example, Kozuki Odin, this is your new beatdown for for green. This is definitely a four times must get. Get this card if you're playing green, it's just gonna be good. However, it's gonna fall off in OPO3. So don't spend like an arm and leg on this one. Just try and get it for as cheap as you can. But it's gonna be a popular card that you're definitely gonna see a lot of uh, in OPO2. All right, Nami is a very interesting uh, character because it doesn't go in a lot of decks you can play in red green law you can play i mean it's it's the best in red green luffy uh or any green deck that wants to play like the film package like use the skate does have a version that plays the film package as well uh this is i would say a mini staple because the film package requires you to get a lot of uh, different cards it's not like a, oh every green deck will run this it's only if you have the film stuff because this is what nami is searching for so i would say uh get it if you want to run the film package you don't necessarily have to pick four times of this now if you're going to lean into the film package the three most important cards are nami brook and of course monkey de luffy i think uh brook and nami alone are enough or fill up with choppers some vanillas out there then it's fine luffy is just like the icing on top but it's still really good uh so if you are leaning towards the film package get four times uh get a play set of each of those cards if not you you really don't have to however this Yamato is an absolute staple. This is if you're playing Kinemon, if you're playing Yusa Skate, get a place out of this. This is the best green card outside of like the Super S or whatever. This is legitly one of the greatest cards to have come out from Opio 2, and it's the one that makes green really good. It's Yamato. Get a playset of Yamato, it's really good. All right, now we're gonna jump into the blue cards. If you're playing the Impel Down package in Azuma, it's a definite staple. It's just, you just need Inazuma. Uh, Ivankov is a definite staple. You need a playset of Ivankov if you're playing Ivankov. Now, Kabaji, interesting enough, and also uh, Moji, uh, which we'll talk about, which, you know, if you have Moji, draw two cards, trash one card. It's not a staple in OPO2. No decks play it at all. But in OPO3, when Nami comes around, this is going to be a card that you might need. If you're planning to play Nami in the future, future proof yourself get kabaji get moji just in case have them in the back pocket crocodile is a staple for ivan decks. get a playset gecko moria is a kind of staple in oh i wouldn't call it a staple actually but it's a good addition to doflamingo decks if you want to play doflamingo get gecko moria draco mihawk will be a good addition to green blue sanji decks so get a playset if you want to play the green blue sanji buggy is an absolute staple it's a searcher for the impel down blue strategy so get a playset of buggy for sure if you're planning to play ivankov same with uh, kabaji just now moji not a staple now but it's a staple in opio3 for nami deck so get it if you can monkey d luffy super rare is a staple in ivankov decks get a playset of this card it's just really good same thing with kabaji and uh, moji mr one is kind of I'm just future proofing the Nami players uh, who watches this video. This is uh, get a playset, keep it in the back pocket a little bit. Once OPO3 comes along, you get your Namis. This card is going to be necessary. Uh, Mrs. 2 is a I would say it's a staple counter. If you don't need to get this, you can use other 2k counters, but it's a good card. Get a playset if you're playing with Ivankov. Similar to Mr. 3. Mr. 3 is I, I would consider a staple for Ivankov decks. It's just really good. Definitely play Mr. Tree. Okay, the next two cards uh, did see some play. I wouldn't call them staples, but these are like tech cards uh, for Impel Down. So if you want to get it, you should get Everbest Big Fist, uh, similar to New Kamalan. I think New Kamalan would be a staple, um, except people don't really run the full playset sometimes. They only run like two copies. So make with that as you wish. 
All right, now we're going to talk about the purple cards. I would say Sadie is sort of like a, a staple for purple if you're leaning into Magellan uh, or even Kaido uh, with the imp purple impel down cards. Plus, it's a 2k counter. It's a staple. Sure, you could be a staple if you're facing a lot of Zoros. Uh, people do play certain numbers in their decks, not really sometimes a full playset. Um, it's good. It's a good pickup. So if you if you really want to play purple, I think this is a safe pickup for sure. Hannibal is an absolute staple. This is your searcher for the uh, purple impel down cards. Definitely get a playset similar to Buggy, similar to Nami. This is a playset. You could potentially get Magellan. However, it didn't really see a lot of uh, impactful play. I wouldn't call it a staple. Get it if you like Magellan. Similarly to the Minion Koala and also the Minotaur, the the, uh, the Jailer Beast. If you want to play Magellan, if you want to lean heavily into this, you could get them. I wouldn't call them staples. It's only good in that particular deck. All right, for purple players out there or blue purple players, this is your staple. This Judgment of Hell event card is by far one of the best event cards for purple to come out from OPO2. This is a must have four times. This is just too good not to play. Play this card. It's a staple. Now, Hydra and Venom Road, certain people play a certain number similar to impel down so not necessarily staples but if you're leaning towards purple get your play sets anyway all right now we're going into the black cards now black starting with the super rare now black's gonna be expensive it's all the super rares are gonna be staples kuzan is a staple get a play set of kuzan this is definitely necessary Kobe actually a, a pretty much a staple in black decks it's just a really efficient form of removal um Oh, yes, you are discarding one card from hand, but you are KOing something that's three or less. And with all the other cards that reduce uh, costs, Kobe is just going to be the most efficient form of removal outside of Sakazuki. So definitely a staple. Sakazuki, 100% a staple. Get a playset if you want to play Black. Black does need the blocker, so I would put Corazon as a staple because it's a blocker. Similar to other blockers out there, I would rank this a little bit higher uh, compared to like uh, Blendum, for example, for the Whitebeard Pirates. Uh, this is definitely a staple for Black. Borsalino, Kizaru, 100% a staple. If you're playing Black, get your playset early. This is one of those cards that, uh, along with the other Black Super Rares, that might go up in price after a while. So get them early, get a playset, get a staple. There you go. Monkey D Garp is actually a staple in Black decks. Uh, its ability uh, to KO something with cost of zero when attacking also comes in handy. Also, it's a 2k counter. Definitely a staple. Get your playset. Meteor Volcano is, I would say, a staple. A lot of black decks do run it. Okay, it's less of a staple, more of like uh, if you have the space for it, uh, do run it. I think some of the black event cards in the starter deck might be a little bit better. Um, however, this is still really good. Just get it. For the black event cards counter, um, do get for a playset of the uh, Impact Wave. That card is an absolute staple in black. You do need to pick up two of the starter decks if you need a playset, I believe. So get that playset first. That's really good. That's a Meteor Volcano too. Playset. Uta, the Secret Rare Uta, not necessarily a staple. Not a lot of decks run it. You can if you want to. It's a cute artwork and this Secret Rare alternate art is still really the best uh, looking one so far. However, it didn't really see a lot of play, so you don't necessarily need to pick up. However, Kuzan, 10 cost secret rare Kuzan, is an absolute staple for black. Get a play set. If you want to play black, just get a play set of this. This is a necessary pickup, 100%. Don't need to spring for the alternate art. Both are sexy, but you have to get a play set of this for sure. All right, that, so that's a little bit of rapid fire of like cards that had a lot of impact in OPO2, what I would consider the major staples of must-have cards in certain decks. So use this guide as, uh, you know, something that you want to refer to. If you are not buying like a full common uncommon rare, super rare set for each color, you can just get these cards from your local game stores or from your friends or whatever. And you'll definitely do fine in the next better game because you will have already have the card. So, so consider this for those budget conscious uh, players who don't really want to get uh, a full case or a booster boxes. Just get these specific cards. They all have the specific reasons on why they are good, which I have mentioned in the video. And you will find that uh, all of these staples in each color will definitely 
uh, will definitely be the ones that you commonly see when you're playing your matches in OPO2. But there you go, that's just uh, what I consider the staples of uh, cards in OPO2 for each color. I hope someone finds this useful and hopefully I can get some people to save a little bit of their money uh, when they're looking for these new cards. So all the best in your OPO2 journeys. I will talk about specific OPO2 deck lists um, in the future, in the next few videos. Specifically, I am going to aim for a Whitebeard and Smoker list, just so you can have, uh, and also maybe Kinemon, so that you know everything in the A tier have been covered. You, if you want me to talk about Zoro, I will talk about Zoro. But there you go. After this uh, series of OPO2 cards, I'm going to talk about OPO3 already because I really am excited to share some Katakuri decks with you. Uh, but anyway, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like and subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.